y'all she was seven okay so I had a video request from a lady and she asked me to give some tips and pointers on how to go out by yourself alone without looking you know nervous or uh, desperate or something like that in order to uh, put yourself in a situation and an environment to meet a nice guy well I used to go out by myself all the time I in fact I prefer to go out by myself why because I was in control of when we leave what who I talk to who I associate with um, you know the place that I went you know there's no compromise there um, and also because there's no distractions and I can actually look around pay attention to what's really going on the type of guys that were there and then also it makes you more easily to approach because guys don't like to approach a large crowd a group of women and you know they they will but they prefer like to approach someone who's alone because it's more personal okay so what I would do when I went out alone I would go I wouldn't go to like a club or like a bar I would go to like a lounge where they had like live music and a bar and food so it would be like you're going out to dinner and I would always order um, something to drink or like a little appetizer or whatever a glass of wine don't I, I wouldn't recommend ordering something like uh, because your drink says a lot about you so choose a drink that you think reflects your you know personality or that will attract a certain type of man like you know if you're if you're drinking like cheap beer or something that's not that's not cute if you're drinking like wine or a certain type of wine or a mixed drink or something like that um, that's that's fine but don't don't drink anything that will probably either scare him away or you know show that you're you know only worth a beer or something like that okay because if he when he comes to buy your drink if it's a cheap drink you know that's easy he can sit there and buy you drinks all night and and you'll be impressed by that but if you get something kind of expensive and he knows that that's like the first clue to sh you know to say you know she has you know sh she has expensive taste she this is the kind of drink she orders she doesn't get that cheap vodka she gets the name brand vodka da -da 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 -da. okay so anyway because a lot of times when a guy approaches you and he offers to buy you a drink, he'll just tell the bartender, um, can get her another one of what she's having. And if you got premium liquor up in there and you have Patron shots and Grand Marnier and all, you know, high priced um, premium liquor. And then on his bill, it says your drink was $15, <laughs> you know, he's going to say, okay, well, I've invested $15 for one drink with this lady. I might as well get to know her, you know. So, he's going to sit there and talk to you for a while. Before they approach you and you don't want to seem nervous and like desperate and like looking around like, oh my God, look at me, look at me, come over and talk to me. Be in your own world. Act as if you already have a man, okay? Because that's what guys approach. They approach the confidence, the, the fact that you're not desperate or thirsty or needy and that you're not there just to meet guys. If you act like you already have a man and you're not even worried about all these, you know, professional um, wealthy guys around here and you're not even paying attention to them that's going to make you more attractive okay if you're you know a lot of people will get on their phone and that's that's the most annoying thing like a guy can see when he's interested in a girl because he doesn't know who, she, who you're texting you could be texting your man your ex you know somebody that he doesn't know um, and you might be texting your boyfriend your husband so I suggest bringing something to write with or to occupy your attention when you start to feel, you know, awkward. Um, I used to carry a like a notebook or like a little journal or like a little drawing pad that I would write my ideas down in. And <clears throat> don't don't bring a book to read because that's like they they will feel like they're disturbing you. But if you like just sitting back, you have a little notebook. It doesn't have to be a big one. It can be like a little purse size notebook and you're writing something down and um, you look up like you're getting ideas, like you're thinking and then you look up and you're like, okay, that's going to intrigue a lot of people because they're, first of all,
first of all, it's mysterious. They're going to be like, what is she writing? Is she a poet? Is she an artist? What does she do for a living? You know, what kind of, why is she gathering ideas? And da, 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 you know, so that's going to intrigue them. Um, and so they're probably going to come over and like, hi, my name is such and such. How, how are you? Oh, what are you doing there? It's, you know, it, th that's the conversation starter, you know. Don't use your phone unless, like, you know, unless you really, really have to and somebody calls you. But keep your phone in your purse, okay? If the, a person that's always on their phone is always distracted and they miss a lot of things, okay? So, and don't put your lipstick or makeup on or check your makeup unless you are in the restroom. Don't do that in public. It's, it's really unclassy, okay? Don't do it. <laughs> Um, and don't like, don't play with your, your hair and stuff too much. I know I had, a, I used to have a nervous habit of playing with my hair and someone told me one time, do you know that I've, you touched your hair 57 times since I, you've been in here? I'm like, what? You sitting there watching me. Okay. That's creepy, but okay. So note taken. Don't, you know, a person that touches themselves too much and you know, this, 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 and that while they're out, you know, that's a sign of nervousness or, you know. <clears throat> and security so keep your hands busy with something you know writing put your drink keep your hand on your drink or uh, something like that but um, yeah so if, be comfortable in the moment use that time to manifest use that time to you know write out a list of things that you want in your man and you know while you're sitting there vibrating in this manifestation of what you really want you know, you could also be attracting it because you're sending out that vibe. And if you're writing down, I want to attract um, this type of man. If that type of man is in there and you're vibrating that vibe, you know, that vibration, he's going to stick out to you. You're going to notice him and he's going to notice you because now you are vibrating on the level and the frequency of this type of man. So I suggest like the best time to manifest is when you're out. You know, they don't have to know what you're doing. Uh, you can just write it really small in your little book, flip the page when they come and like make some silly notes or something. But yeah, you're going to be able to attract it faster in the environment while you're manifesting the perfect mate or the, the guy you want. And they're going to pick up on that vibration as well because you're so close in the proximity. He, they're going to feel it. Okay. Um, and a lot of women say, you know, the kind of guys that they really like don't approach them well you have to understand you have to get into their mind what kind of women do the guys that you like like how do they dress how do they wear their hair what does their makeup look like if you have on a ton of makeup and the type of guy you like is very conservative and you know has lots of colleagues and has to introduce you to a lot of people that you know are you know elite and stuff like that you can't have on fuchsia lipstick and uh, <clears throat> a pointy, uh, you know, eyebrows that are just like in your face. You know, you kind of you have to tone down your look. You got to tone down your look, or get a more professional look. That you know, if if like say um, a judge, a, an attorney, a doctor introduces you to their um, colleagues, and you're looking like you know, you just stepped off the street corner, it's not going to work, okay? So you have to adjust the way you dress and the way you look for the type of man you want. They're not going to come up to you if you're not fitting in their image of what the, the wife or woman should look like that they're going to be with. So, um, you know, Lots of guys like women in softer colors. Harsh tones are like very masculine. So you should dress like in blues, like soft blues, pinks, creams. You know, um, I wouldn't, I mean, red is okay, but you know, that's like a signal for like, like sex and oh, look at me. So um, subtle, you know, nudes, naturals, grays pinks, blues, soft lavenders. This shows that you're feminine and they treat you feminine. They treat you like a lady if you are reflecting ladylike colors and qualities. 
they treat you how you dress and that's crazy but it's true like if you're dressed super trendy and have like you know all this stuff going on they're going to treat you that way they're going to treat you like you're a follower you're um your your focus is on you know trivial things they're going to treat you like that they're going to not they're not going to think you're very smart but if you dress classic classy um even interesting you don't have to be like conservative you can just have like a different type of style that's not following trend or you can just like do if you're going to do the trend don't overdo it just have like one piece here one piece there and that's it you know um but they treat you how you dress and the more feminine colors you wear the more they'll treat you like a lady um they're not going to ask you to you know come out of your pocket if you have on uh, like a pink um, a really soft pink shirt pink lipstick uh, your your pink nails not hot pink but like soft pink and you talk like you know really girly feminine and you smile and laugh they're not gonna ask a woman like that to pay the, the woman that they're gonna ask to pay is, is like okay so what do you do and yeah I gotta get back to uh, work I have you know you know they're, if you, the more you act like a man the more they're gonna treat you like a man so if you act really feminine and stupid and not stupid, but like, you know, soft and how are you? Oh, that's so sweet. You know, they're gonna pay because now they feel like the man because you're the exact opposite of them. You know, now they feel like, oh, I, I got a man. I got this. This lady is so ladylike and feminine. And oh, if I don't pay, she's gonna think I'm. You know. You know, then they're gonna start feeling more manly so when you can make a man feel more manly by acting extra feminine then that's how you get stuff that's how you get the attention that's how you get things paid for that's that's how you get stuff now there's a lot of women who will brag about themselves have big egos and be like well you know da, 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 da. those are the kind of women that are asked to pay that's why <clears throat> in one of my videos I call it playing dumb when you play dumb and you don't tell everything it's not really playing dumb it's just don't tell everything you know keep a mystery about yourself you know don't tell them what you can do how many degrees you have what kind of job you have you can take care of yourself da, da, da. don't tell them all of that they don't need to know that because most guys really don't ask unless that's uh what they're really interested in like if you don't want to tell somebody what you do for a living this is how you deflect the question so what do you do for a living? Oh, I do so many things. Oh my goodness, you would not believe all the things that I do. But I really am here to relax right now. And let's just say that I love what I do. Leave it at that. That does not intimidate them. Because if you have a better job than them, they're going to be intimidated. And if you don't have a job, they're going to be like, this is, you know, she's a, she's a gold digger. She just want my money. But they don't know what you do. And they don't have to know what you do. Leave that to mystery, you know. Just say, I, I don't really like to talk too much about things when I'm out. Um, but I just, I'll just, i just tell you, I really enjoy what I do for a living, okay. They're not going to know what that means, you know. That can, that can be some crazy stuff left up to the imagination. And that is what keeps them interested. The wonder, okay. So, then they're going to say, well, I'm going to find out what you do for a living. I, that's, you know, that's very intriguing. You know, oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you later, you know, once I get to know you, I'll, I'll let you in on my, on my, uh, my, uh, my passion. And just leave it like that. Now they're intrigued. Now they want to get to know you because there's something that you're withholding from them. And, you know, it's interesting. So you got their mental attention, you got their... Uh, visual attention and you know you got them feeling all masculine and manly so now they're gonna want to get your number you know you don't have a bunch of cackling women in your ear telling you oh girl no oh girl yeah oh girl I think he's gonna try to steal him behind your back go out alone bring your paper and pencil and pen and manifest and put off that vibrational frequency and attract that man and keep him intrigued and act feminine so that he can feel masculine so that he can reclaim his masculine role as provider and protector for you you know it's all mental y'all it's all mental so i'm gonna leave it at that 
and uh, please comment below what you think and if you go out alone and if you're going to attempt to go out alone, especially during the holiday season, very good time, okay? So I'll see y'all later. Bye!